Hi there, welcome back. This is Cindy again. We are still working in Module 3, Customizing the QuickBooks Environment. We're all the way down now to Section 2, where I want to talk to you a little bit about working with users. Right now, if you open the QuickBooks file, you can open right into the file and start working. But if you set up users, what will happen is when you open the QuickBooks file, the user will have to plug in their username and password to get into QuickBooks. And there are several different reasons you want to do this. What I want to do is flip over to QuickBooks and talk to you a little bit about some of those reasons and how to actually go ahead and set up users. If you remember when we went through the Easy Step interview, one of the questions asked us about setting up the password for the administrator. And I had a quick conversation with you then about the fact that even though you don't have to create users or set up that password for the administrator, it's very, very, very highly suggested. Some reasons for doing this would be if you have users set up, then it's a lot easier to track down when an error is made, who was logged on at the time, and what they were doing. Not that you're trying to get anybody in trouble, but it's just easier to track down errors that way. Another reason for setting up users would be, what if you hire an employee and you want to limit their access to certain areas of QuickBooks? You'll be able to do that. Let me show you how to set up the users, and only the admin can do this. So you have to be logged in as the administrator to add, edit, or set up users. You're actually going to Company on the menu, and you'll see an option that says Set up users and passwords, and you want to go to Set up users. Now you have the ability to set up five users in the QuickBooks Pro version. The administrator that you see logged in here is one of those users. Since we didn't set up the password for the administrator when we set up the company file, you would want to go and edit the user here and set up that password. Let's say that we want to actually hire a new employee and we want this person just to be able to pay our bills. So they're basically going to work in this section here where it says vendors. I'm going to go ahead and add a user. What you're going to do is put in the user's name and then you're actually going to put in a password for that user. Now just for the video I'll just use two letters but in real life you want to have passwords that are 8 to 12 characters or longer. You want to use any combination of letters, numbers, special characters. If you have trouble remembering something like that maybe try a phrase that works good for you and also change your passwords out on a regular basis. I'm going to go ahead and click Next and then it asked me, do I want my user to have access to all areas of QuickBooks, selected areas, or just note that there's an option for an external accountant as well. If you have an external accountant, you can give them their own access. They would not have access to areas that have sensitive customer data. That would be things like if you have a customer's credit card in QuickBooks, which I would never advise you to do, but if you do, they wouldn't have access to things like that. I'm going to give this user access to selected areas of QuickBooks and click Next. All the areas it asks about will have the same options. This first one asks about sales and accounts receivable. I'm going to say no access to that. This one asks about purchases and accounts payable. Now this is what I'm hiring this person to do, so I'm going to give them full access. Notice your choices are full access or selective access. If you give them selective access, you can see there's three choices as far as what underneath selected access you'd like to give them. But I'll go ahead and go back to full access and click next. I'm not going to give any more access to my user, but notice the areas it asks about. Checking and credit cards inventory, time tracking, payroll and employees, sensitive accounting activities. Let me just tell you what these are if you hear this terminology. You have some options in QuickBooks like the ability to make a journal entry. A journal entry allows you to move money from one account to another. Maybe transfer funds between accounts. That would be like transferring from checking to savings. I'm going to click Next and it now says sensitive financial reporting. That's just the reports that go with those sensitive financial things that we just talked about. Here it asks if I want to change or delete the transactions. I would leave this where it defaults. The top one says 
in the areas the user has access to, do you want them to be able to change or delete your transactions? Of course. What if this user realizes she entered a bill twice? She can delete one of those. Down here it's asking if she can change or delete transactions recorded before the closing date. So we're going to say no there. Now this one just gives us a summary of how we answered those questions. I'm going to click finish. Now you can see that you have two users on the list. Notice the admin is still logged in. I'll go ahead and hit close and show you how this works. I'm going to log out of QuickBooks. Now if you have users set up you should always 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 log out. Don't come over and click the X that just closes your file or closes QuickBooks. Go up to file and go down to where it says close company log off. And this is a screen you should see when you open QuickBooks every day. It should also be the same screen you see when you close QuickBooks. I'm going to go ahead and double click on my company file and it's going to come up and ask me to put in the username and password. It always has the last person who logged in, so you have to drag across that and type in the name of the new user. Then you'll put in the password and you'll click OK and it should let you get into the QuickBooks file. You're going to notice that the preferences are set per user. Do you remember earlier when I had moved this to the top? That was because it was for that user. Let me close this new feature tour here and let me show you how this works. When you first look at it you might think, oh I thought I only gave the user access to accounts payable. Let's say the user was actually working and she decided to click here for example. You'll see it says you need sales and accounts receivable permission to perform this action. So it's not going to let the user into areas they don't have access to. I'm going to go ahead and click OK and I'm going to log back out. So I'll go up to File, Close Company Log Off, and I'm going to open up the company file again and this time log in as the admin. And because we didn't set a password, I'm not going to put one here, but remember in real life you need that password. So that's how to actually work with your users. Let's go ahead and wrap up this section and go over to section three where we're going to get into the chart of accounts. Hey everyone, Simon here. Thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe to our channel. Click over there to get the complete seven hour course for QuickBooks 2018 and click over there to get the complete list of videos in this playlist. I'll see you next week with additional videos.